Hey everybody, it's Mark from the Family Woodworker Channel. Hey, this week we're going to do some upgrades to our small wood shop. You might recall a video we posted last year featuring the layout of our small wood shop in a 19 by 9 format. And this is how it looked before we started the upgrades. The back bench was pretty beat up. We had a basic dust collection system in the corner. And our workbench was pretty basic. It was a two foot by five foot chunk of oak, uh, but with just simple two by four legs, it didn't have any weight. And even when you were trying to plane some wood, it bounced around quite a bit. So the first thing you wanted to do is upgrade the back bench. And in this particular case, I had a couple options. I thought about putting Formica down on the tabletop, but for the cost of the Formica, and as easy as it is to scratch and stain and drill holes into, I found a flooring product. This is essentially tile, vinyl tile, that locks together. And I really like the light gray color of this stuff. And it's gonna turn out to be a great addition to the top of the bench. The whole package to do the bench cost me 45 bucks. And the product really just snaps together. It's pretty simple to lay out. Now one of the other things I wanted to do was to create a little bit of a tabletop for my chop saw so that the plywood that I'm putting in place here is at the same level as the, the bed of the saw and it allows me a little extra room to slide lumber back and forth. But I also took a tip from another woodworker um, and their YouTube site is called The Fisher's Shop. And he had a video in there about improving dust collection. And essentially he custom made a hood to go towards the back of the saw so that you could hook up a vacuum and, and your dust collection system to it. And it does a really pretty good job at pulling dust in off as you cut lumber here. Now, you're gonna see little tiny traces of sawdust in the front there, but essentially that dust collection system pulls that sawdust through to the hood. It turned out to be a great little project. So thanks to the Fisher's shop for that idea. But once we finished out all the uh, floor tile on there, this is pretty tough stuff and it looks great. And I just used some gray stain to stain that wood platform and that all came together really well. I dig it. Now one of the other upgrade items, a feature that we didn't really have in, uh, in our last video, I've got this old rolling cabinet from my father and he bought this thing which had a radial arm saw on top of it from Montgomery Ward which is a Midwestern retailer uh, I remember going with him to the store in Detroit in the 60s to buy this thing and I had to keep it in the family but it's just a big hunk of steel uh, with an open cabinet and I wanted to put something on top of it um, some wood on top of it so that I could use it as a platform to even screw down and bolt down some of my other uh, woodworking tools. So basically all I did was take some 2x4 lumber, trim off the rounded edges, get it all squared up, and to glue it into a single platform. <laughs> and now I'm trying out a new dust mask here. I'm not sure if I like it yet, but we'll do a little sanding on this top. Um, I didn't want to get too crazy. Um, it's not going to be a piece of furniture. It's going to get beat up. Uh, but I did some basic sanding on it. I did a round over bit with my router uh, just to smooth off the top. And then I'm going to seal it with a little Danish oil uh, just to give it a little color. Uh, I don't even need to do this. Uh, but it's going to be a great platform for uh, mounting a router table or, you know, in this particular case, my, my little portable planer. Um, and I will actually screw some holes in here to mount those pieces down on the cabinet when I need to. So it's got four wheels in the bottom of the cabinet. It's really easy to roll around. Uh, it turns out to be a great little utility table. It's even pretty close to the size of my table saw, so it'll be a great out table. Uh, the next thing we wanted to do was upgrade our dust collection system. So I said I had a basic system in the past. It just had a piece of plywood for the top. Uh, but I wanted to bring over some plumbing over to my chop saw, and I did that with some upgraded uh, steel tubing and some flexible tubing that brings me down to a form-fitted plastic top to that garbage can. So I bought the top, I bought the extra 
uh, valves to be able to attach that to my various uh, woodworking tools and that all worked out really great. But I wanted to feature something here. Part of the problem with these dust collection bags is they're under high pressure and I'm just using the scale to demonstrate that and how hard you have to push to make a dent in this bag. So that means the fine dust inside the bag always tends to leak out of this thing. And I was thinking about how to come up with a solution and my wife helped me out by using an old 300 thread count bed sheet, a tight weave bed sheet, which had faded and we didn't want to use it anymore, but we built a bigger bag to fit over the top of that high pressure bag. And because it's so big and because it's under low pressure, you push on it with the scale and, and you can easily make a dent in this stuff. That tells me that the pressure between the inner bag and the outer bag is significantly different, meaning the dust won't really push through the outer bag. And I've tested this a couple of times and the outer bag collects quite a bit of additional fine dust. It was really cool. Sort of an accidental piece of engineering for a guy who's not an engineer. Now the big work item here was the upgrade to the center workbench. And in your shop, this is your, your main utility table. And these little two by four legs just weren't cutting it. Um, it didn't have any weight. Um, you know, it was easy to move around uh, and slide around and knock around and wobble. So uh, I decided to beef up the legs with two by sixes uh, and also a two by six table on the bottom, uh, sort of a shelf on the bottom of this table to give it quite a bit of weight. I'm also going to, and you'll see a little bit later on, I'm also going to create a, a large uh, oak side piece to this table that allows me to do additional woodworking and uh, we'll, we'll show you that in just a few minutes. So basically the two by six legs are in the corner and I use these monster lag bolts to attach the runners to the tabletop and on one end of the table because I'm going to put a lot of weight in this thing I want some wheels so I can lift up one end of the table and then slide it around a little bit so the wheels will go on one end of these new legs. Now I'm going to take a tip and I'm going to borrow an idea from Chris whose YouTube channel is called The Third Coast Craftsman. He's got a great video out there for upgrading his workbench and one of the features on his bench is he's got a side panel of thick hardwood. He used maple. In this case I'm putting two pieces of inch and a half oak together to give me that thick dimension but it's going to run the full length of the bench and I'm going to drill dowel holes all down the length at different heights so that I can actually rest pieces of wood of different different dimensions on this particular oak panel and you'll see how it all comes together a little bit later but I thought Chris did a great job with his bench and I borrowed a couple of ideas here for um, my construction. So I just glued these two pieces of oak together to give me that overall height. And now I'm gonna build a little bit of a cleat. And, and I understand that this, this type of cleat system originated uh, with French workbenches. I'm not completely sure but again, this idea was borrowed from Chris at the Third Coast Craftsman. So I'm taking another piece of oak and essentially I just designed this cleat by hand and the idea of it is that the inside part of the cleat varies in depth from about two and an eighth inches, two and a quarter inches down to about a half an inch. So if you look at the gradual slope of this curve, I could actually take almost any piece of wood and jam it in there to lock in place uh, of any dimension larger than a half an inch. And I'm a little bit of a nutcase, but it came out really nice. So now to drill the, the dowel holes up and down this entire big piece of oak. And I preset the drill press to go down in my inch and a half lumber, about an inch and an eighth, which gives me plenty of depth to put uh, hardwood dowels in there and they'll sort of lock in place and they'll actually be able to hold quite a bit of weight. And so I had these holes symmetrically laid out up and down this entire length of oak. And that's kind of what it looks like. 
I also pre-bought, there's a couple of great suppliers out there for hardwood dowels, and I bought some one inch walnut, and I'm cutting them all at the same length so that I've got some of these, they're officially called bench dogs, but they fit nice and tight in those holes. You can still pull them out by hand, but that'll wind up being the basis for me to adjust uh, how I use that particular bench. Now I also mentioned that I'm going to put a heavy platform or a shelf on the bottom of this bench on the inside and I'm using all this heavy 2x6 lumber in a couple of pieces here and putting it together with just biscuits and uh, unfortunately I don't have a lot of video of how I installed this but essentially this fits on the inside of the workbench and you'll see a picture of it a little bit later on. So once I got the biscuits all set up and it glued up I just clamped it and then I let this one sit overnight. And this turned out to be a great little addition with some of the leftover lumber that I had. I'm also going to upgrade my bench vise. Now I, I just used a couple of pieces of scrap wood I had at the time and that worked out okay but I also had a, another piece of this one and a half inch thick oak which I thought would match the whole bench. So right now I'm going to use this entire length uh, to attach to my bench vise but I want to drill a couple more holes for those bench dogs so that I can, um, if I need to tighten down a flat piece of lumber like a door uh, or a, another big panel, I can put these bench dogs in there with my vise and I can tighten them up on the bench. So here's what that panel will look like on one side of that overall bench. And I'm going to attach this right to the 2x6 legs that I just created. little pre-drilling of course and I countersunk these heads <clears throat> and I'll be using the really heavy-duty um, cabinet screws to hold this in place and here's how those bench dogs will work and of course if you put them all in a straight line it works out pretty well And I wound up measuring these wheels and they're, they're almost exactly five inches in height. And so we adjusted the one side of the legs to be five inches lower than the other side, of course. And they'll all fit on there kind of nice and it, I checked it and it's all level. Now this is that cleat that we talked about. And you'll see what I mean here as we attach this to the side of the bench. And it's gonna be perfect for, for planing pieces of wood. So we'll pick ourselves up a block plane here and we don't need the busy boy toolbox, but uh, it's always great to have that handy. And depending on, again, the height of the wood or the, or the width of the wood that you need to plane, you put in your bench dogs to uh, provide that height. And then when you push it into the cleat, it locks in place. It's a pretty cool little system for, you know, almost any dimensional lumber that you need. Um, you just move the bench dogs up or down lock it into place into the cleat and it gives you a, a method for running a plane against it. It's a great idea. Not mine of course, but uh, I'm happy to borrow great ideas from other YouTube channels. And here is the piece of oak now attached to the bench vise and it's an extended length so it allows me to you know clamp up lumber uh, across the top of it or standing upright. I need to put a little bit more support oak uh, underneath the bench to give me a bigger clamping surface, but essentially that's how that's going to work. So here's the final shop tour. This took me about three weeks to do all these upgrades, so I haven't posted a video in a while. I appreciate your patience, but the new top on the back bench looks great. I think that, believe it or not, that vinyl tile is going to work out fantastic. I didn't really change my shelving systems, but you know, as a tip for people who haven't seen my other video, when you don't have a big workshop, you have to build high and you have to build low. So I've got three shelves above the bench and I've got plenty of storage under the bench. My new center bench works out great and because of those wheels, I can kind of pick up the one side and move it around. My new stool there, which was another video, <laughs> works out great in the shop as well. And so I've got the double bag system on the dust collection system. 
I still have two other sets of shelves. This is one of them for all the hardwood components. The upgrades that we made to the dust collection system are going to be great. I really don't have to drag the hoses around the shop anymore. And the center work table, again, works as a great out table for the table saw. And a couple of other uh, adornments to the shop this year. The sawdust sign was a gift from my daughters. And we also did a video on that wood shop sign. I also want to give a quick shout out to Wintergotten and his Marble Machine X project. Go out on YouTube and find that site. It is really cool woodworking mixed with uh, steel and ironwork. A great project. And as for the woodshop project, it was great. Thanks for watching. Take care.